Hey, Leslie, good evening, I guess it is at this point. Yeah, yeah. All right, John. <laughs> Uh, I know a hot topic going into this one was the defensive line and, and producing their own pressure from, from what you've seen on the film and what you saw last night. What is your assessment on, on what they did? Well, we finished with, you know, one sack on the evening. We had a few hits. Um, the hard part was Mahomes got out a few times, and we've seen, seen him do that to other teams as well. And that was one of our goals going to the game was to, as much as we can, keep him in the pocket. And when he got out and scrambled for a couple first downs, I mean, that was really hard for us on defense. And, uh, you know, it's something we got to continue to work on when we face mobile quarterbacks. Uh, but we were able to get around him. We just didn't always contain him like we had planned on doing. And from what you saw from Brian Cox and Justin Zimmer, they were certainly the, the surprise moves going into that one. What did you see from those two guys? I thought Justin really stepped up and, and gave us quite a bit, especially in the, uh, you know, being able to put some pressure on the quarterback and help us some uh, in the run game as well. Uh, so I thought he really did a good job. And he did a good job when we played the Jets early in the season when he had a chance to play you know, also. And for Brian Cox, a guy who really hadn't been on the field in probably over a year now, uh, to go in and, and, and play as well as he did by providing some edge rush uh, that was good to see, and hopefully he'll continue to progress as we go forward. Thank you. You're welcome, Jim. Hey, Leslie, it's Sal here. How are you? Hey, Sal. You know, I love revisiting your career a little bit here. Uh, but <laughs> those, those, I'm always fascinated by those Bears teams you played on. But I looked, at, I looked at some of those teams. I wanted to draw on your experience as a player here. Even as good as those defenses were, you had some tough stretches. Um, you know, 84, you went to the – NFC title game, but there was a time there where three games, three out of four, you guys allowed like 99 points in three games, lost three out of four. You were a player then. Can you, can you think of a, a common thread between player, playing and you know, coaching since you've been around it, teams that turn that around and get through those stretches and what it takes? And how can you draw on those experiences as a player for your young players? Yeah, you know, I really don't have to go that far back. I can go back to 2017 here yep. with the Buffalo Bills and look at the stretch that we went through and we ended up becoming a, a playoff football team. So uh, for sure that 84 team, and even our 85 team, we had some rough stretches early on and we ended up winning a Super Bowl in the 85 season. So been through it. Uh, the one thing you got to do is make sure you don't lose confidence in what you're doing. Uh, there are some times where things are getting a little haywire and you want to throw out the kitchen sink and start all over again. The message has to be uh, to your players you know, we're going to stick to what we do and, and make sure that we improve on our fundamentals. If you believe in what you're doing and make sure you're working to correct your mistakes, but also working on your technique as well. And if you do that and you stick to it, the guys will believe in, in what you're doing and they'll get better over time if you've got the right people. But if you knee jerk because you've had a, a bad game or a couple bad games, and you start changing this and changing that. And all of a sudden the players are going like, what are we? Who are we? And you, you really have no identity as you're trying to fix some of those problems. So our message is not going to change. You know, we've, we've been through some rough stretches before. We've come through them, and we'll come through this one as well. Thank you. And, and if I can, like, having a guy like Sean, who people always say how consistent he is, that's really been a, a theme of his coaching, consistency. How important is it to have that leader and the coaches, and yourself even, to make sure that you're always staying on being consistent and you guys not getting away from things to not relay that message to them? Uh, that's extremely important that it comes from the top because, I mean, guys speed off of the leadership. And if they see that the leadership is wavering at all, then they're going to be, be begin to waver a little bit and doubt as well. So Sean's leadership has he's been like a, a, a mountain in, in that way. I mean, just really rooted and very firm in what he believes in, and that really permeates our team. I think that's what's helped us to go through some of the ups and downs of an NFL season and come out you know, on the positive side in years past. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. Hey, Leslie. Now being through six weeks of play and having some time this week to get back to working on the fundamentals and improving on mistakes that were made, why are you confident in this defense that they can maybe bounce back in this game against the Jets and, and get on the right path here uh, heading into week seven with a lot of the season left ahead? Yeah, I think what you just said, matter of fact, that there's so much football left to be played and we get opportunities starting this week to continue to work on some of our fundamentals and trying to improve. And that gives me hope. And what, what Sal and I just talked about a moment ago, we've seen it before where there've been some rough stretches and you just keep working at your craft 
And if you've got the right people uh, that buy into the message, you're going to improve over time. And that's the goal. I mean, you don't want to peak in September or October as you are finding out your identity and making sure that you're staying true to what you think it is. Uh, you know, you hope that in November, December, you begin to ascend. Uh, you, you know, you're, you're building towards hopefully a championship season. You don't want to peak uh, this time of the year at all. You want to be getting better as the year goes on. And I think we have a good chance of being able to do that. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, uh, Matt Perino here. Um, Matt. You know, we've, we've talked uh, the last couple of weeks about Tremaine and, you know, what he's been dealing with kind of coming back from that shoulder. But putting that aside for a second, I mean, there's a chunk of the fan base that, you know, right or wrong, it, you know, is concerned about maybe a drop-off in his play. Are you guys seeing a drop-off in his play? Any recognition issues? Or ha have things have just been, you know, going bad all across the defense? Yeah, you know, Tremaine is – I mean, he's, he's, I can't ignore uh, the, the shoulder injury. I mean, that's, that's real. You can't ignore it, especially in the linebacker position and the middle linebacker position. And he's, he's worked through that. He's still working through it. Uh, there are some plays he'd like to get back for sure. Uh, even from last night, he'd like to be able to play a little bit better. And I think he will continue to improve and get better as we go along. Uh, so not overly concerned about Tremaine. I think he's got to work through what some of those issues are. And we just got to keep getting better around him and just continue to follow his lead because he is, without question, one of our uh, undeniable leaders on our defense. And what do you tell the guys? Obviously, you know, you could tell the amount of work that's gone into trying to right some of the things that have gone wrong for you guys, but you can start to see the frustration, you know, as games go on and things aren't shifting. What do you tell the guys on the sideline when maybe some penalties or just guys just getting down? What, what do you tell them on the sidelines? You're, man, you really got to stay the course, man. Uh, it's a long season. Uh, you know, we still are in first place as we speak, and there's a lot of football to be played. And, yeah, we may have some issues. But a lot of other teams got issues as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you just can't get down on yourself. You got to keep looking at what, what those issues are and say, oh, how can we improve on those? And then you just continue to work at it. And, if you take that mindset and you understand that this, this is a marathon, not a sprint, you have a chance to you know, really improve. It's, and I've seen teams that start off 6-0 and in our league and not even make the, make the playoffs. And you, know, you just got to understand this is a process and just keep working to improve. And uh, it'll come you know, as long as you believe it. Thanks, Leslie. Yes, uh, Coach Frazier. Uh, George Redney, Challenger Community News. Uh, question for you. It seems like the defense is, well, the defense since 2017, you mentioned, is more predicated, predicated on the nose tackle. And I'm wondering if you guys maybe even consider looking out, getting, seeing if you can find someone that's big, that's 340, 350 pounds, to, just to plug up that middle. Because it seems like everybody else plays off of the, uh, the nose tackle and able to beat their players. But right now, everybody has to man up and beat their man without that middle being secured. Yeah, you know, um, you know, Star did a great job for us in that role in the past. And the guys we have now, I mean, they're battling. They're giving us everything they, they have. And uh, they're going to be able to get it done for us, George. I mean, we have to play with the guys that are on our roster. And if we need any changes, you know, Brandon Bean is always looking to, to, to make sure that we have the right guys on the field. But the ones that we have are more than capable. We just have to continue to work to improve as a group at every position. And I think if we do that, we're going to get better uh, at the nose tackle and at all the positions. We just got to keep working hard. Uh, well, did there any consideration last night in, in, the, in, the, in the Kansas City game, uh, uh, flooding, having nine men on the line and just, just forcing uh, KC to pass? Late you know, in that we, game, the final drive? You, you know, late in the game, we did uh, bring a little bit more people, brought more people to the line of scrimmage. Like when they had a third and one, and we forced a field goal. We had a lot of guys at the line of scrimmage on the one that Mahomes rolled out on uh, and really forced them to kick a field goal in that scenario. And there were a few others where we did it. Um, you know, you have to pick your, your, your spots when you want to get nine at the line of scrimmage against this offense. And we did. We tried to pick our spots and make them have to go the long way to score rather than taking shots over the top of the defense. All right. Well, thank you very much. And good luck this coming week. Thank you, George. Hey, Leslie. You, you brought it up a little bit before, but I was hoping you could get into further detail about how exactly 
this team was able to break out of that three-game stretch in 2017 when you're allowing it was something like 40, 45 points a game, 200 rushing yards. Uh, you know, what was it? Or is it just as simple as knowing that there was time to improve and knowing that you were better than the product you put on the field? Yeah, you know, I, I, I think Marcel goes back to, you know, what I was saying when I was talking to Sal a moment ago. You, you keep working on the fundamentals of what you do and you believe in what you're doing you'll have a chance to improve as long as you have the right guys. And I think we have the right guys and, uh, you know, we'll keep working at it. We'll keep working to improve. And I think we will. And as long as our guys believe that we will improve, you know, we've, we've done it before we can do it again. And I mean, it's just a lot of football to be played and you just take it one game at a time. And this week and this, this next day, tomorrow, when we practice, you know, working to improve on some of the fundamentals of what we do, once you identify what some of those issues are, and you just keep pecking away and, and trying to improve. And, you know, we, I think we can improve. Hey, we heard from the guys, uh, I think it was specifically Josh Allen, I know it's not your side of the ball, but that there's not, there's no panic in the locker room, but there is a sense of urgency. I was curious, where do you think the line is between, you know, playing urgently or, you know, trying to develop urgently and actually thinking, no, there's a major, there's a major issue here. Well, I think in our league, I mean, you know, when you only play 16 games in a season, uh, you don't want to let one slip away that, that you feel like you should have gotten. Uh, so there's always that sense of urgency in my mind to improve and, and work as hard as you can to get a win. I mean, it's, uh, you know, just, just, it's not an 82 game season or 162 game season. So these games are, are so big. Uh, you want to practice with that sense of urgency. You want to prepare with that sense of urgency. And you want to play with that sense of urgency just because of how important every single game is in our league. Thank you, Leslie. Hey, Leslie, uh, Sean and, and a couple of the guys last night talked a lot about the inability to get off the field on third down, but third down and long in particular, wh what are you seeing there in terms of, uh, is there a let up uh, uh, on some of your guys thinking, you know, that they've already got the job done or, or, you know, those are situations where you would think that the defense should, you know, should really be at an advantageous spot. And, uh, you know, the, the opposing offense is just finding a way to convert. What are you seeing that's allowing that to happen? It's been a combination of things between our rush and our coverage. I mean, there are times last night and even in the game on Tuesday night where we, you know, set up a situation where we have a third and long where we really feel good about it and our technique soft a little bit or the quarterback ends up getting out of the pocket and, and making some plays on the run. And uh, so it's been a combination of things and we've got to settle that down. Uh, hopefully starting this week and you know you get a team in third and seven plus you'd like to feel like you have the advantage to the six i mean you know it's a little bit tougher more 50 percent if you can win in those situations but the seven pluses in the past you know we've been pretty good so it's uh disappointing to see how we've struggled in that area in 2020 so we'll have another chance at it this sunday and we've got to figure out a way both schematically and uh, execution wise to be better than we have been it's just it has to improve. I mean, that's a, a big turning point in our season if we can improve that. Yeah, I mean, you talk about, you know, frustrations building. I mean, can there be anything more maddening than when you get them into third and long and they're able to convert? Is that that is that peak frustration level? That's pretty frustrating because, uh, <laughs> you know, you feel like you should be off the field and all of a sudden you give them a new set of downs and these offenses are so good, you give them another set of downs, it just makes it that much more difficult. Uh, so we got we to gotta definitely improve in that area. And then lastly, you know, you're, you're pretty even keel whenever you, whenever you talk with us. But, you know, last night in the fourth quarter, you see two of your leaders in, in Tredavious and, and Jordan on the same drive, hand them 30 yards with, with personal fouls. Uh, are you maybe not so even keel with them about the message that that, I mean, that just can't happen in a game like that? Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's, it's a one score game. You know, we get a stop in there somewhere. You know, we maybe give our, our offense another chance to you know, bring us back. Uh, so it's frustrating uh, to see that happen. And those are two of our leaders and uh, they were as, as frustrated as anyone. They know how impactful those penalties were. And, you know, I can't take it back now, but hopefully we'll learn something from it and it won't happen again. But 
those were moments you, you don't want to see, in particular from guys that you're counting on to really counsel other guys, not to, uh, for us to have to counsel them about a situation like that. Thank you. Coach Frazier, Mookie Hawkins, Ruffle Sports 1080. How you doing today, sir? I say, Mookie, doing good. All right. Um, that first touchdown, third and seven inside the 10. Y'all was playing yeah. stone with Poyer and Trey Davis. Somebody should have been one-on-one on Kelsey right there. Um, it's just like um, just to play aggressive at times where you feel that you should be playing aggressive. Uh, I think that, you know, you were kind of showing – Kansas City, the defense a little bit too early. You was given that look too early. Maybe, you know, that Jets game, y'all was lining up. Y'all was real exotic. We haven't seen that since. Will you get a little bit more into, you know, being a little bit more exotic pre-snap to help the defensive front out? Yeah, we're going to, you know, we're going we're gonna to try to do some things to really be better in some situations, better than we were last night for sure. Um, what those are, I don't know how many Jets coaches – Scouts are listening to this conversation, but we definitely want to do some things looking to uh, be better than we were last night with our looks for the quarterback, for sure. Absolutely. One thing, I know he's banged up, but how about moving Tremaine around? It seems like he's not playing aggressive enough, just playing back, just looking from sideline to sideline, trying to react to things or, or just having come off the edge sometimes, you know. Uh, how do you get this defense? I, I know Coach talk about being humbled and hungry all the time, but this defense isn't angry. When is this defense going to be angry and, and, and feared throughout the league? Because right now, it doesn't seem that way, Coach. Yeah, you know, it's important uh, as we go forward that you take a look at the next opponent and you do all you can to prepare the best you can to defeat that that next opponent. And that's exactly what we're going to do this week, Mookie. We're not going to, you know, look back at previous opponents. We're really going to focus on the Jets and go out and hopefully play our best game of the season. I mean, that's the goal uh, this week. It's, we have one game to play. And hopefully when you and I talk uh, after this ball game, we're talking about how well – our defense played. That's my, that's all of our goal. Yes, sir. That's the goal. And hey, don't be afraid to let those guys run some gassers or something after practice, man. Give them okay. all those yards. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, man.